What's going on everybody? So you have an interview coming up with Amazon. Well, you come to the right place. I've gone through the entire Amazon interview process, not once, but twice. I've also had fun interviews with Amazon on two other occasions and I did an internship with Amazon, which is kind of like half of an interview because you do an online assessment and a phone interview. So it's not as rigorous as going for a full-time spot. So the Amazon interview process is gonna be pretty standard for all engineers. So you're gonna have your initial call with your recruiter and they're gonna set you up for a 45 minute to one hour phone interview. And if you pass the phone interview, you're gonna be invited to an on-site interview, which is gonna be four to five back-to-back -back interviews. So I have my call with the recruiter and he lets me know about the position and he says that it's a SD1, which is Sophomore Deve Software Development Engineer 1, um, which is the entry level software engineer for Amazon. Now SD1s are kind of rare because they're generally reserved for their interns who get return offers. So it's kind of rare to see an opening just for a straight up SD1. Usually it's gonna be SD2 and above. So he sets me up for a phone interview about a week or two later. So the engineer calls me for the phone interview. He's an engineer that would be actually working on the team that I was interviewing for. Initially, the call starts out with him talking about my background. He talks to me about the different AWS tools I've used, such as Lambda, API Gateway. He let me know that they actually use a lot of the similar tools. So he kind of just wanted to gauge kind of what my experience and what my knowledge level was in those tools. The second part of the interview was a coding exercise. Now, the coding exercise was, if you've ever done lead code, it's called Tusum. It's a pretty trivial problem if you've seen it before. There are several way, different ways to solve it with different time and space complexities. And if you've ever watched any of my lead code videos, I always stress that you want to talk about it before jumping into the code, because this is definitely a problem where I would have been like, oh, I've seen this before, let me just start coding it up. But you definitely don't want to do that. So I talked about the different ways that you could solve the problem. So I initially started with an N squared solution, which is a pretty slow way, like kind of like a brute force way to solve it. And then he let me know that he wanted, he, like, he was like, okay, yeah, that way it works, but you know, can you think of a faster way to do it? So then I just went through like, I'm not gonna get too much into the technicals, but I just talked about different ways to solve it. And then finally we came up with a solution that he was happy with. And then after that, I just was like, okay, do you want me to go ahead and code this solution up? And he was like, yeah. And since we already talked about how I was gonna solve the solution and I had kind of like the pseudocode steps down, uh, I solved, I probably wrote the code up in like two or three minutes. And then he gave me about five to 10 minutes at the end just to ask him any questions that I had. And for this part, you always wanna have at least like one or two questions ready just in case. You never wanna say, nope, I don't have any questions. All right, see you later. Uh, usually it's, it's good to ask a couple questions, even if it's like something you're not really even that interested in, but it's, it's good just to have something prepared. So the next day, my recruiter reaches out to me and he's like, congratulations, you know, the, the interview was very impress impressed with you and um, we would love to bring you in for an on-site interview. So we scheduled the interview about three weeks out. Um, they send me like the booking information. This was actually, I was flying from uh, San Francisco up to Seattle, which is where the job would be. And that's where the on-site interview was. So I booked the hotel and I booked the flight for a few weeks out. And what they did for this interview that they hadn't done before was they actually set me up for about a 30 minute call with another, I don't know if they were like a recruiter or what they were, but it was just another person that was like a prep interview. And this interview was actually super helpful because she went through every single interview that I had and she was like, okay, you're interviewing with this person at this time. This is the topics that they're going to cover. Um, so I really had a good opportunity to prepare because I already knew kind of what they were going to ask. Now, if you don't know, Amazon has 14 leadership principles. Now, these principles really define what Amazon's culture is about. They use them when they're deciding new projects or kind of like what direction they want certain things to go in. Um, a couple examples are customer obsession. So they're always kind of thinking in terms and the perspective of the customer when they're trying to develop something. Another thing could be invent and simplify. Um, sometimes the best answer is something that's not super complicated, something that's simple. So a couple of examples. And when you're interviewing, they really stress and want to look for these principles in the people that they're interviewing. They want to make sure that the person would be a good cultural fit for the company. So I really can't stress enough how important these are and like how well you need to know these when you're going into an Amazon interview. So what I did was I went through all 14 principles and I thought of a minimum of two examples in my career that kind of align with what the principles were. So an example of this would be one of the leadership principles is ownership. So one example of ownership would be 
Okay, so in my previous job, I had this application that I had to add a feature to. And no one on my team really knew this application at all because um, the previous person that had worked on it had left. So I checked out the application, uh, kind of went through it and understood it, and I made that one change. Now, from that point on, since I was really like, I had to step up on everyone else on the team, anything that came in based on that application, like any changes that needed to be made, I kind of took ownership of the application and was like, okay, yeah, I can implement that. So a few weeks later go by and finally I have my onsite interview. Um, I flew into Seattle the night before and I left the day after. So the day of the interview comes and I have four interviews with four different engineers. And this interview was a little bit different because Amazon generally has what's called a bar raiser interview, which is gonna be one engineer from a different team that comes in and um, it's kind of more of like a general interview and they wanna see if you meet the bar of a Amazon engineer. And this person has the most power. So if you have five interviews and four people pass you and the bar raiser rejects you, it's an automatic rejection. However, in this interview, the recruiter let me know that they're actually gonna be doing something a little bit different. Cause I asked, I was like, is there gonna be a bar raiser for this? Um, and they were like, well, that's a good question. Um, we're actually trying something different. We're, we're not gonna have a bar raiser. We're just gonna have all your interviews be from the, um, the particular sector that you're on, so Amazon Games. So I get to the lobby, I meet with my recruiter, and he introduces me to the first interviewer, and we go to the room and we start the first interview. So the leadership principle here was insist on the highest standards. And they won't ask you like, oh, think of a, like name a time where you had, you insisted on the highest standards. It'll be like a question that kind of relates to that. So when you're actually answering your question, if you actually mention the like actual leadership principle, that's a huge bonus. And this is something that I noticed when I was interviewing. Um, the interviewer will be typing down what you're saying. And I remember that anytime I like explicitly said a leadership principle, they'd be like, oh, and they'd like start typing it down. So if you say it by name, it's like a huge plus. So I don't remember exactly what the question was, um, but I just talked about how like, you know, it's important to have like code reviews and um, you know, I gave and also like had a lot of code, uh, code reviews myself. And like, that's one way where we were insisting on having the highest standards in our code. Now, the technical part of this was an object-oriented concept question. So being that I'm going for a gaming position, they asked me how I would implement um, the game, the card game Crazy Eights in a object-oriented manner. Now, if you don't know what the game Crazy Eights is, you can look that up. But basically what I did was um, I split everything up into the different objects that there could be, right? You could have like your player, you could have an, like a specific card object, you could have uh, the deck of card object, uh, things of that nature. Now, the thing that they're going for was making your objects as modular as possible. So this would be something like not defining your cards in your deck, like having your cards be separate and then having your deck be like a, a list of your a list of 52 cards. So I have everything lined up on the whiteboard. I have all my objects uh, listed out. And the tricky part was actually the follow-up question. And he was like, do you know the game Uno? And I was like, yeah. And then he was like, it's very similar to Crazy Eights, except there are slight differences that you have to make. And he's like, basically take what you have on the board and turn it into Crazy Eight or turn it into Uno. And honestly, if you design your objects well, um, there really aren't too many changes here. Um, like you have to double the size of the deck. Um, you have colors instead of suits, like things of that nature. So we get to the second interview and this is with another engineer on the team. And he asks me about a data structures and algorithms problem. So I get to the second interview and the leadership principles covered in this were ownership and delivering results. The coding problem for this was a data structures and algorithms problem, and it was related to graphs. So the problem was given an adjacency matrix, which represents a directed graph, find the shortest path between two nodes on that graph. So I immediately was like, okay, this sounds like if you're finding the shortest path between two nodes, this sounds like uh, Dijkstra's shortest path algorithm. However, I haven't looked at Dijkstra's in many years, so it just like wasn't coming to me at the time. Um, so I kind of struggled with this, uh, with this interview problem. What I ended up doing was just doing a depth first search on the matrix and then just kind of seeing, like keeping like a global variable of what the shortest path was between those two nodes. Probably wasn't exactly what he was looking for, but he was kind of like, okay, yeah, let's just like go with that approach. So then after that, I have a one hour 
like lunch interview, which uh, is an off the record interview. Um, it was with another engineer on the team. Uh, he took me out for lunch and then they let me ask any type of questions that I have about the uh, about Amazon and about the specific team. So I get to the third interview and it's actually with the person that I had the initial phone interview with. The two leadership principles covered in this were dive deep and buys for action. Now I was given a list of buys and a list of sells for the day. And what I had to do was basically go through the buys or go through the sells and basically kind of match when something can be bought and something can be sold. So the main focus of this was code maintainability and code modularity. So basically what I did was I had two functions, one for buying and one for selling. Um, so I went ahead and implemented both of those. Now the follow-up question was, okay, you have two methods and they were kind of doing the same thing. And it was like, how could you combine these into one method that could be used for both buying and selling? I felt like I did well in the first two parts where I was implementing the two functions, but then when it came to the actual second part, that's where I struggled a little bit. And finally came the last interview of the day, which was with an engineering manager for Amazon Game Studios, but it was for a different team that I was going for. So the two leadership principles covered in this were learn and be curious and have a backbone. So the behavioral question that he gave me was basically name a time where you had to, a disagreement with your manager and kind of how you pushed back on what he was, what he wanted to do. So my answer for this was at my previous job, we had an application that we were supporting. Um, however, it was running on Microsoft Silverlight and it only runs on Internet Explorer. So what I proposed was doing a rewrite of this that would be, you know, work across all browsers. And my manager was like, well, you know, yeah, we, that is important, but, um, you know, it's not really one of our priorities right now. And I kind of pushed back and I was like, well, it only runs on IE. So if you have a Mac and you're running Safari, you can't run it. Um, you have to like uh, install an older version of Mozilla, which introduces security risks. So I think that it's a high priority and it's something that we do need to work on. Um, and eventually my manager gave me the green light to work on it. So the second part of the interview was a coding question. And the question was given a size of a lake, you have rocks within that lake and you're basically starting at the beginning of the lake and you're trying to get to the end of the lake. And you can only jump in increments of two and five. So, and you can jump forwards or backwards. And he's like, basically code out a way to see if it's possible to get from one side of the lake to the other, only jumping on those rocks. So what I did was I actually drew out a recursion tree and I was like, okay, if you start here, like you could go two steps or you could go five steps, this is where you end up. And I kind of like branched it out. And I think that's something that he really liked. So after I had the recursion tree, I wrote out, I was like, do you want me to write pseudocode? He's like, no, just jump straight into the code. So I went ahead and implemented the code there. At that point, it was like four or five hours in and I was like pretty exhausted. I felt like I could have gone a little bit faster, um, but I mean, I, you know, at that point it's like, if you can get like a working solution, then that's good enough. Because there were a couple of parts where he was like, there were improvements that I could have made within the code and I just like wasn't seeing it. Even though it was algorithmically correct, um, there were like some optimizations that I wasn't able to figure out. But uh, overall, I think that was probably the best interview that I had. So afterwards, I would say I was kind of like 50-50 on whether I thought I was going to get an offer or not. So about a week later, the recruiter follows up with me and he's like, I have some news and it's probably not the news that you want to hear, but it's not like the worst news. So he actually told me about the meeting that was discussing my application. And he was like, basically it was split right down the middle. He was like a couple of the engineers kind of like weren't sure, a couple of them wanted you. So since it was kind of split, they didn't want to really take a chance in hiring someone that eventually wouldn't be a good fit. So they decided to reject me as a software development engineer. And he was like, however, we would like to offer you the position of a support engineer. So he sent over kind of the job description of what a support engineer was. And to be honest, I was not really feeling it. The position was more about like, it was more like an IT position where like if something was wrong, a ticket would come in and you would kind of have to figure out what's going on there. But it wasn't like a development position, which is what I was going for. Ultimately, I decided to turn on the position and the recruiter, he understood, but he was like, let's reconnect in six months and let's, you know, see if there's anything available for you. So overall, it was a good experience. Um, the recruiter was very responsive. Um, everyone that I interviewed with was very smart, very professional, you know, and I, I tried my best. So I don't really have any regrets about the interview. Um, I already had a position lined up. So it was kind of a bonus if I, if I did get it.
All right, and that's all I have for you guys in this video. Thanks for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments about what was, maybe if you want me to get more uh, into detail about what was asked, just leave it down in the comments below and I'll do my best to try and answer. But other than that, that's all I have for you guys. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you guys next time.